Okay, now in this video I'm going to show you uh, the first XGen1, which was uh, you know experimental generator. This was an organic Rankine cycle uh, design, which uh, was scrapped in favor of a simpler system. Uh, what it did was it was focused on running a typical pilot light flame here. Let me grab my pencil. Uh, now this was a pilot light flame right here that was to run into a little tiny boiler. And in this, this loop here, you have a working fluid, which is butane, which is uh, very dangerous to work with. So you want to have a pressure release system up here. It's a temperature sensor, pressure sensor, and it's been so long, a pressure relief valve on that one. We focus in a little clearer there. PR, PS, and TS on, on these notes. And over here, this is a CV for a check valve. Here's another temperature sensor I had, just in the basic monitoring. You don't really need those. And so what's happening is you're taking this butane working fluid that's in the closed organic Rankine cycle loop, and you're heating it. So it rapidly doesn't use much uh, BTU at all to burn this, to vaporize this uh, fluid. So if you compare that to propane or water, or a refrigerant of any other type, it doesn't work as well as butane. So that's why I selected butane. Now butane you run through here, so here's your steam cycle. And there's steam cycles coming up, and this is going to turn a modified die grinder or an air motor, some form of pneumatic motor. Now you, you take that pneumatic motor, and also you have a little bit, the butane is nicely lubricated. So you have a lubrication function in here too. And the die grinder won't work as well. You want to use, um, an air motor that's sealed. You want on a typical die grinder, you'll have some venting and loss of that butane out here, which would be very bad. So you want to spend the money on an electric motor. I mean, a, on a pneumatic motor, a very a micro type pneumatic motor. Now here you have the exit phase. So here you're going in hot, and after doing the work, the mechanical work, you're going to be coming out cold, relatively cold. Now you're coming in through here. Now this is a, a heat exchanger, uh, not a radiator, but a typical air conditioning uh, type heat exchanger on a car. Uh, this unit was about the si to be about the size of a, a PC tower case. So over here you have your heat exchanging element over here, and what you're doing is you're pumping in cold water. Here's the water inlet, cold, and your water outlet, uh, hot over here, and. Um, that's it, pretty much. So you have the closed loop, your heat exchanging, and as oh no, you also have to. Sorry about that. You also have to have your <laughs> too eager to get rid of you. You have to have a drive pump here for the fluid. So this is a, a pump that keeps the fluid circulating. And so what's happening is your your outlet from the so here's your cold water outlet it drives through the pump again and comes back in down in the base of the boiler, boils it off, comes through the system, loops down again. And that you would run with a little dimmer switch. You'd be running that off about 12 volt DC or so. Now, what this air motor is driving is a typical uh, alternator on your car, but you wouldn't want to use an alternator. You want to use a, at least a permanent magnetic alternator, something that already has the field uh, set up for you. If you use an alternator on a car, you'd have about uh, 1,000 watts there uh, per unit. So 1,000 watts, if you daisy chain them, you, you know, with the pulley system, you'd have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 watts. And uh, that's about it. It's a little generator, a candle power type generator could give you 4,000 watts or so. You know, a lot more if you make a much more improved type of generator system there. And uh, you know, it's a fuel burning generator, and it, it's a very highly efficient generator, about 12 times more fuel economy than a conventional generator. And I don't really like it, though, because it burns fuel, so I scrapped it. But you might enjoy building that. Now, here's a basic schematic, some specs. I'm just going to go over it real quick. Um, this was your boiler. Just some notes there. Your twin relief. I wanted twin relief valves for at least double. Uh, redundancy. Now, this was earlier. This was an earlier design where I was looking at warm water coming in. That's not accurate. Uh, the relief valves were adjustable to about greater than 120 psi. Let's see. I wanted to locate one in line. I haven't looked at these notes in a long time. 
Uh, the initial inlet temp was to be about 212 Fahrenheit. It comes up to pressure. And, now, that's the other thing. Part of the, what makes this thing work is that uh, so this was originally looking at it in terms of taking a, a pressure and temperature gauge over here. And here's your valve, a little chimney outlet here. And you have a pressure and temperature bottleneck created by that valving. And so that's one of the things you might want to look at is also valving that boiler to build up the pressure and temperature in it and sort of uh, throttle the flow somewhat. Uh, see, over here I had just the water uh, and water temperature, uh, at your different water temperature and your steam pressure uh, values. So here's 215, you have 1 psi on water, take it all the way down to 470. Fahrenheit, you're about 500 psi on water, so you know it's very dangerous to be working with steam, and that's on water. Uh, let's see, at 3206 psi and 700 degrees, 705 degrees Fahrenheit, that's where you're super critical on water. The vapor and liquid are inseparable at that point. Uh, let's see, what else do I have to show you? Uh, now, these butane systems were initially designed by uh, Solar Turbine Group and MIT as a, sort of a Peace Corp project where they were trying to run in a solar, instead of the boiler and flame assembly that I have, they were using solar troughs. And, uh, you know, I was trying to make things much more compact and, you know, things for a hybrid type automobile and all that, or, you know, aircraft. Now, let's see what else do I have to show you. The, now this is my little math shorthand. If you increase the temperature going in and your temperature going out, you're going to have an increase in uh, your wattage over here. That's uh, the typical heat engine type uh, assembly. You have the, you know, the differential between your, your heat, your temperature in and your temperature coming out of the system. So the more you add heat, the more you add flame, and the more you cool uh, with some form of source, whether it's uh, air cooling or liquid cooling, that differential between hot and cold is what gives you RPM, or you know, in this case, it's uh, your power. And uh, here I determined that I wanted about 20 horsepower uh, to run an alternator, a typical type of generator that you run and find in your hardware stores and things like that. You want about 20, 20 watts in those things, or 20 horsepower. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I had two test alternators, two 250 alter alternators I was looking at later. And these are just notes I don't even remember. Just different alternator type notes. I was looking at inverter and grid inner tie. Little kitchen thermometer, cold water going in. Oh, take a look at the general layout. We have, uh, so here's your boiler. Over here, here's your propane burning flame running your, to your boiler. Now your butane gets heated up in here. You don't have any venting out here. That's just, the, that's actually your, your relief valve in the circuit here. Now, so you're coming up. This is your, what is that, your condenser. And then, I don't know, it's been a while since I even looked at that. Something doesn't seem right there. Yeah, you don't need this. This was just something in my in my circuit here. What was I doing? Let's see. You have a condenser one, condenser two. I'm sorry, condenser two, condenser one, condenser two, condenser three. I forget what I did on that. Anyway, pay no attention to these notes. These are um. Now here's a comparison of some of your potential work fluids, your refrigerant, your butane, and propane. And see, butane has a 31 degree Fahrenheit vapor pressure. Ammonia is also very nice. It's, it, ammonia will vaporize much sooner for you under heat, and same with propane. But butane is a little more practical to use. And uh, partly because it, over here, see my notes, ammonia corrodes copper, brass, bronze, and zinc. Um, increase the pressure is also you'll increase the boiling point. Uh, let's see what else do I have in here. 